Killing It with Lead Generation on LinkedIn. Thank you so much for joining. My name is Irina Skripnik. I'm the Product Marketing Manager here at LinkedIn, and I am honored to be hosting this webinar with Killer Demand Gen Strategies featuring um, Qualtrics, who's joining us today as guest speaker. Today with me, I have Mike Mann uh, and Mitchell Wright, who will go through some of their killer demand generation strategies, uh, and will cover off some of the best practices for both sponsored updates and sponsored in-mail. So before we get started, I wanted to cover off on some housekeeping items. Um, so first and foremost, um, I wanted to let you know that if you do have a question, please submit the question in the Q&A box uh, that's provided within the WebEx. Um, this session will be recorded, so if you do have some feedback, um, please go ahead and submit it with a survey that we'll be sending to you at the end of this webinar. Um, I also wanted to let you know that you can go ahead and follow us on at LinkedIn Marketing Solutions and visit uh, and follow our showcase page, Marketing Solutions on LinkedIn.com. So please go ahead and submit your questions. We will have a Q&A session at the end of the webinar for about 10 minutes, uh, and we'll have um, Qualtrics answer any questions that you may have, um, similarly questions you may have regarding the specific products that we'll be covering. And the agenda for today's webinar is to really do a strategy deep dive, deep dive with how Qualtrics has been using um, LinkedIn and how they've been succeeding with, with their demand gen. Uh, we'll cover off some of the event registration uh, and lead gen best practices for both our sponsored in-mail and sponsored updates products. Uh, and we'll do about a 10-minute Q&A at the end of the session. So at this point, I'll go ahead and hand over the stage to Mike and Mitchell, um, who will walk you through their programs and their killer demand gen strategies. All right, thanks so much. We're excited to be here and appreciate the opportunity to speak with all of you uh, about what we're doing here at Qualtrics. As you know, we're all looking for ways to do our jobs more effectively and efficiently, and Qualtrics has products that empower people to do that. Uh, but the key for us is then finding people and organizations who are most going to benefit from the products and services that we offer. And thankfully, LinkedIn has been a great partner, allowing us to target and approach the right people with the right message, whether that's for a specific product, whether that's uh, through our thought leadership or invitations to premier online events, et cetera. And so um, that's, that's what we'll run through today. Um, and we'll cover uh, a number of things. First, I just want to give you a little context as to who we are. I think that will help um, help you understand a little bit uh, about what we do. And then we'll, we'll dive into um, some of the objectives that we have from a marketing perspective and how we've used LinkedIn to accomplish those from, from sponsored updates and sponsored in-mails. In uh, and we'll run through some specific campaigns as case studies and, and lastly sort of identify how we um, figure out the target audience that, that we're trying to go for. So just to give you a quick background on Qualtrics itself, uh, Qualtrics is the world's leading enterprise survey platform. So there's over 7,000 uh, organizations worldwide that use Qualtrics. We started back in 2002 primarily uh, in the academic market and as researchers at various uh, institutions collaborated on research, they, they sort of shared and, and Qualtrics grew there. Ironically, it was in 2008 as the economy began crashing that Qualtrics really took off, and that's because anyone can do well in a good market, but when the market is bad, organizations needed to make data-driven decisions um, in order to, to be right and know that they were moving in the right direction, whether that was with their market, uh, with their customer experience or, or customer voice of the customer programs, uh, understanding their employees, et cetera. And, and so that's uh, kind of who we are um, today. Here are just some examples of some of the clients we have doing a wide variety um, of things on the Qualtrics platform. So with that, let me jump into sort of uh, LinkedIn and, and demand generation generally and, and kind of talk through the, the marketing objectives that we have. So if you boil it down to its simplest form, uh, our goal is to connect with people and organizations that will most benefit from our products or services. Uh, no, <laughs> nobody enjoys, um, you know, kind of having conversations that don't relate to them, uh, but we all need help in doing certain things better, and we always appreciate when someone approaches us that way. So how can we best identify who's going to, to appreciate what we have to offer? Uh, better said, our, our goal is to add value. Um, and so we do that um, by helping identify these people. And, and if you think about it, it's not all that different from dating. 
Um, finding the right match can be hard, uh, something that I know all too much about. Um, but but that's just sort of how it works, right? And, and uh, LinkedIn helps us to figure out that right match so that we make sure that we're not wasting other people's time and that they're uh, not annoyed by the context, but rather that we can find uh, the right place where we add value um, to one another. So just to explain a little bit about where we're coming from, Qualtrics has this wide variety of products um, for a wide variety of roles. And the reason that this is, is both a great opportunity and a great challenge for us is that that means that we're talking to a lot of different people. It means that targeting the right individuals and presenting uh, the right sponsored update or the right sponsored in-mail um, means that we have to really focus and, and figure out how to do that. So, for example, we as a company have products and, and services that primarily fall within these three categories, customer, uh, experience, employee engagement, market research. Um, and there are some organizations, a lot of organizations out there that do one of these things. There are some that do uh, two of these things, but, but very few that, that do all of them together. So this is a unique in the sophistication and unification of this overall platform. And that can make targeting difficult. And so uh, where we've been able to leverage LinkedIn is, is primarily in two ways. Uh, one is to target buyers within each of these uh, segments. And so we'll talk in, in a minute about one of the, the customer experience events that we ran where we were able to, to really single in on people who were just focused on the consumer customer insights who wanted to do voice of the customer type of stuff. Um, and it allows us to target that way. Now, when we look at people who are using the whole pr uh, platform more broadly, so for example, you've got uh, Ford who, who integrates all of their customer experience programs and their employee engagement together because higher employee engagement uh, is always correlated with, with better customer experience and a, and a more um, dominant position in one's market. So if you're doing both of those, then we can't actually target just the customer experience professional and we can't target just the HR professional um, because it's actually a, a team or group of people that are working uh, on both of those things together. So as we target buyers in more senior roles whose responsibilities span those areas, um, that's another way that LinkedIn has allowed us to, to target people um, that would benefit from kind of both of those at the same time. So as we jump in now, I think it's, I think it's of interest to, to kind of look at what are some of the things um, when we say that we want to drive leads to events, um, you know, <laughs> we sometimes refer to it as, as one of the unsung heroes of demand generation, as you can see uh, this line here and all these people in this picture who are laughing at my dating jokes. Um, but the key for us is, is that there are four pieces um, of any sponsored update or sponsored in-mail that we think are, are very important, and this is how we sort of define what we'll do. And, and uh, LinkedIn, obviously, at the end of this, will walk through some of the best practices for all of these things. But the key for us revolves around these four. Be relevant, be direct, be creative, and be integrated. So uh, we'll take the, the next little bit here to walk through each of those and use some examples <laughs> of, of how this works and, and what this has meant for us. So, for example, Qualtrics recently hosted what was something called CX Week. Now, CX Week was the largest customer experience event in the world. It was a, a week-long online event with uh, four webinars a day, a lot of content downloads, uh, contests, etc. cetera. And um, it, it, it was a focus on one of our areas, customer experience. It wasn't a Qualtrics-specific event but rather an opportunity to bring together the best uh, thought leaders, practitioners, brands, et cetera, all into one place to just discuss what works in customer experience. Uh, how do people think about it? Uh, what are the challenges that people have, et cetera, et cetera. And so uh, as, as you're all familiar, nobody wants to throw a party and, and have no one come. So we, we often create invitations. When you're, when you're younger and you have a small birthday party, you just go hand those invitations out to friends who know you personally, who have a vested interest and who are going to show up as a result. But when a party is large like this and, and online, um, you're inviting a lot of people that you don't know. And so the keys to that are, are one, identifying the right people. Um, so who's going to benefit from this? Who's going to find uh, this to be, to be relevant? Um, it's making sure that you get them the right message, and, and that's part of this being direct. Uh, part of getting them the right message is helping them see the value 
you you like me i'm sure are are very busy right there are a lot of demands and pressures on your time and so we want to find things that will add value uh not simply suck up time uh part of that piece is establishing credibility and legitimacy so you know okay i want to come there's a reason um this isn't just a ragtag team with nothing to offer but something from which I'll gain real and valuable insights. Um, and so we'll, we'll use a bunch of these uh, pieces that we used during CX Week um, to talk about these four pieces of being relevant, direct, creative, and integrated. So let's take a look at, at this. This was one of the sponsored updates that we, use, um, that we used. So being relevant. Um, I am uh, not someone who wants advertisements for women's footwear. That's just not part of my Thing that I'm, I'm purchasing, right? So if people feel that you're uh, advertising or promoting things to them that are irrelevant, then you quickly lose credibility um, and people won't listen anymore. If it's something that's going to help me do my job better, um, then I, I generally have time to jump in. So for this, we're targeting customer experience professionals, and we want to make it very clear up front that we have something of value for them. So that starts with even the name, CX Week, right? So Customer Experience Week. Um, we say several times throughout this, this image, uh, customer experience, how you can wow your customers, largest customer experience event in the world, uh, top brands, thought leaders, and practitioners to help you raise your CX game. It is in some ways uh, maybe overly repetitive, but it also helps establish very quickly um, the, the relevancy of what we're sharing with them and it helps people recognize that. In terms of being direct, attention spans, especially on social media, are very short, and so you can't make people go looking. Um, we wanted to, to very quickly help them, you know, see largest customer experience event in the world at your desk. It's free. It's online. Uh, you'll have webinars, best practices, so they know, you know, look. I don't have to go travel to this. I don't have to go get managerial approval for for budget or time away from the office, et cetera. Um, you just tell me directly up front, give me all of the information uh, that I need to know, and then I can dig in uh, in more detail after the fact um, to better understand what uh, I'm looking for, what value um, you're going to add. Here's a, another example of a sponsored update that we shared that, that fits within this be relevant, be direct, and that is the principle of establishing credibility. So here we're showing people that when they sign up, They'll be hearing from some of the top brands in the in the CX world and some of the top uh, individuals. And so, when when people think of customer experience or the most ideal customer experience uh, in the world, the name that more often than not comes to mind is the Ritz Carlton. Um, it's just like there's the Michael Jordan of basketball. People refer to the Ritz Carlton of customer service. And so by establishing this, this sort of, uh, of credibility, it helps people understand this is a legitimate place to come and spend time. It's a legitimate investment. And again, with a sponsored update, you have very little time um, and very little real estate to, to really get all of that information out there. So for us, it was a matter of making sure uh, that we did that for them, helped them understand that, that Zappos, Bain, Ritz were among the people that would be there uh, to talk about how to become better customer experience professionals. Now, as with all things, there are different audiences uh, for, for things, and we need to reach out to them in different ways. And so we've showed you two of the ways that we did it. One really focused on the, uh, the customer experience professional. Another focused on, on establishing legitimacy. This third piece is uh, really important to us because it's all about that uh, being creative. And so there are some people that will respond really well to the first uh, two. For us, we felt it was really important to have another aspect, another avenue to reach people who, who maybe hadn't engaged previously, but, but would engage if we gave them another um, thing. So we went to the, the Soup Nazi, for those of you familiar with, with Seinfeld, um, and, and he is the consummate example of someone who has uh, provides a terrible customer experience. Um, <laughs> for those who've seen the show, it's just a, a miserable time. Everyone's on tiptoes. He will constantly yell, no soup for you, and take away this greatest soup in the world. So how could we flip that on its head? Well, well we thought it would be fun to create some videos um, using the Soup Nazi and, and taking this old theory of no soup for you, uh, showing that he went to Customer Experience Week and comes out 
with a, a new outlook on life. He's still his crotchety old self, but uh, instead has this more soup for you uh, type of experience. And so we we did this as a full YouTube video, which garnered almost a million views on YouTube, but then we made a bunch of shorter vignettes that we posted as sponsored updates to LinkedIn. And different things, as we've said, resonate with different people. So we're always A-B testing to see what's working and what isn't. And then we're always iterating to see do, do certain target groups uh, on LinkedIn respond better to certain types of messages. Um, are the you know, our videos more important. Uh, one of the things that we found throughout this process for us was the color of the image had a huge impact. And so as you A-B test on these things, uh, in addition to being relevant, direct, creative, and integrated, it's important to see uh, continually what's working and what doesn't, what sticks and, and with whom. Um, and so this gave us just one more way to reach out uh, to people in a creative way that, that allowed them to see the value um, and get uh, engaged with what we had to offer. Now moving to this last piece, again using uh, CX Week as this example, the, the, the most important uh, aspect about this part is be integrated. And that may seem pretty simple, but organizations often miss this because they'll post a sponsored update or they'll send a sponsored in-mail and then when someone clicks on that or, or goes from that experience to either a landing page or the website, um, there's not this integration, there's not this uh, similarity in language, in colors and branding and messaging, et cetera. And it can be a rather jarring experience to go from a sponsored update that purports to deliver one thing to a landing page or a website that appears to offer something different, even if it's not different. Um, it, in, and in your mind, it may make sense. It's very important to create this unified experience um, where people are able to go um, from one area to another. And if you're not careful, if you lack this sort of integration, it can feel like a bait and switch even when it's not. And that will substantially hurt conversions um, and thus your ability to deliver value to the people that you've already targeted, that you've already got interested um, and now they just need to take that last step. Um, and this integration piece has uh, played a key role in our ability to, to help take people from the point where they express initial interest to the point where they're able to, to take advantage of the value that we offer through these events by virtue of having this sort of unified theme where it uh, is easy for them to sort of feel like they've gone uh, from one room of the house to the next instead of being thrown into a whole new city. Um, next, let's look briefly at, at sponsored in-mails, and here we'll turn it over to Mitchell for a minute. Yeah, so as Mike mentioned previously, when we were running this specific campaign um, for CX Week, one thing that we really wanted to focus on was um, testing to make sure that we were getting the most bang for our buck with the money we were spending on LinkedIn. Um, and we, we got very specific in our testing, so much so that we even tested what it looked like when uh, someone would receive this in-mail and would see just this little preview. Uh, we tested a few different things. We tried tried it with the Qualtrics branding. We tried it with the CX Week branding. We tried mentioning the different companies that would be presenting, like the, uh, the Zappos, the Ritz-Carlton. Um, we tried the angle of hey, this is coming to your desk, so you don't have to go anywhere. And and that's really important for us because of the testing that we did, we were able to drive down our, our cost, per, cost per registration for this event. So it was it was really, um, really, really good for us. So some of the things that we like to test, as I mentioned, were the different images, subject lines, uh, the different messaging. So what, what appealed more to people? Was it the, the brands that were going to be presenting and learning from them, or was it the fact that they didn't have to go and travel to an event somewhere and try and get approval from a boss for that? So those are some of the things we tested with the in-mail um, uh, in particular. And then with the actual body uh, copy of the in-mail, when someone would actually open it, we wanted to make sure that we added value and that we added value quickly because the in-mail is it's really kind of an unwelcome intrusion into someone's life. So if you aren't adding value, they they could they could become upset. But if you add value, then all of a sudden it can turn into turn from that intrusion into something that that they're actually very excited about. And so that's that's what we found as we as we tried to cater our ads towards that value add that they would receive. Um, as you can see in this in the in the 
300 by 250 ad, it's, it talks about the endless insights from the best customer experience brands. They can instantly see that they're going to get something of value if they go to this. We were able to turn it from something that might be annoying into something that would be very valuable and that people would want to um, click through and register for our event. And one of the interesting takes here, and I know uh, LinkedIn will share this with us as well in a minute, is this balance between being very efficient in your in-mail and also getting enough information across that people are able to see and understand the value. And that's a, a constant trade-off and one that we've battled with. Uh, shorter is, is generally better, um, but, but you also have to be able to deliver enough value. I know that sometimes I get emails that are so um, make such an effort to be efficient that unfortunately they don't tell me what I'm looking at. And so it, it is that balance and that's something that we've, we've looked at um, quite a bit to figure out what works um, and what doesn't. Yeah, and so what we've found um, in the use of sponsored in-mails and sponsored updates um, with the direct sponsored content is that the in-mails have really performed well for us when we have a specific event that we are trying to get registration for and get people to. Um, I think I think a lot of that comes down to there is there's a specific timeline, there's a specific call to action, um, and it, and it has worked very well for us. So with CX Week, uh, it it was great in addition to the direct sponsored content in in driving registrations for that. Um, with the sponsored updates and the direct sponsored content, what we found is that that works very well um, not only for events but also for our content marketing. Um, if you, if you think about it, it it can kind of hit that, that broader audience with the in-mails. We try and go very specific and hit the, the very valuable high-level decision makers. And with the sponsored updates, um, we can cast a bit wider of a net and we can um, reach a broader audience with those. I think that's a, a really interesting point. So again, the sponsored in-mails, uh, we found the most success for, for event type um, things where we can target very specifically. Uh, Let's just walk through a couple of examples here on where we're using sponsored um, updates, generally speaking, to cast this much broader net. So, for example, we're hosting something called Talent Week. It's obviously very similar to CX Week, but to a, a different group. And like CX Week, it's like CX Week, but, but for a much broader audience. So um, we're still using sponsored in-mails to target HR professionals, talent development professionals, organizational development titles, people that uh, are, are in the industry and will benefit a great deal from sort of um, the best practices that we'll share, the webinars that we'll have in that regard. But Talent Week is also much broader, and so this is for anyone who's an employee, anyone who wants to get better at their job. There's resume and interviewing advice, CEOs sharing you know, what they look for in superstar employees. We've got the CEO coach um, for former executives at Dropbox and, and Twitter and, and other places coming to give advice. So when you're, when you're doing a much broader audience like that, as we are with Talent Week, the goal for us is that uh, for HR and those professionals, in-mails are really effective. For the broader group, we're using sponsored updates um, to do that and get the word out that way. So for us, it's very much a two-pronged strategy um, that we're able to continue to use depending on the type of event and the type of audience that we're doing. Um, Mitchell, let's walk through some of the, the sponsored updates for content marketing that you mentioned as well. Yeah, so if you want to go to the next slide, um, we can look at some of those. So. Uh, we, we run a variety of different tests, and that's kind of the biggest thing for me is, is test, test, test. Uh, I, I like to test the images because that's, that's one of the first things that people are going to notice. If you have a real eye-catching image, it's going to catch the people's attention, and that's what's going to cause them to click through and give you that opportunity to um, have them then download your valuable content. Um, so the image is the first thing that I like to look at, and I always like to have at least two variations running at all times because you can always be improving your campaigns. Um, and, and a lot of times things can be a bit counterintuitive. If you look at this, this one with the question marks, I mean, it's not a very attractive image, but it's actually performed pretty well for us because I think it's eye-catching in its ugliness, you might say. Um, so, so be willing to test things that, might, that you might not think would work right away. Uh, another thing is to ask questions. Uh, when people see those questions in the, um, the that opening line, a lot of times that will pique their interest and they'll they'll ask themselves, huh, well, okay, what is the answer there? Or maybe I didn't know that. Um, and then calling out specific audiences. 
So in this top one, we're actually targeting people who run uh, insights for professional sports organizations or for collegiate sports organizations. So we try to make sure uh, that the imagery matches what they might be interested in and that the messaging uh, matches what they would be interested in. And, and those are things, once again, that you should be testing. And and it's all going to go to the same landing page. Uh, you can test your landing pages. You can test uh, the messaging so that it matches better on your landing page and your uh, sponsored updates. There's just so many things that, that you can test to make sure that you're really getting the most bang for your buck on your uh, direct sponsored content. So so that, that's what we like to do there. And then I want to talk... Just oh, just sorry. one thing to add on that. I think that, that often it's interesting to see uh, sometimes marketing departments can um, fall victim to this fallacy that design is everything. Um, and as Mitchell brought up with the question mark image, maybe not the, the most beautiful image. In fact, uh, almost, I think you said, uh, intriguing in its ugliness. <laughs> um, but the idea is that, that um, effectiveness cannot be victim uh, to good design because nobody wants a, a website, for example, that looks incredible but cannot convert leads. Uh, the same is true in all of this stuff is, is figuring out what works and what doesn't. So we all have brands that we manage. We all have an image that we create uh, for our companies overall. But it's important um, to, to not sacrifice uh, effectiveness um, for for just good looks and and so for us it's been a matter of, of a B testing and proving that model uh, throughout as we've done these things yeah and one more thing actually before we go to the next slide uh, just a couple more things that we've found that worked pretty well for us are uh, using statistics in your headline a lot of times people are intrigued by that and they want to find out more about those statistics and uh, a lot of people who do content marketing know this but lists work well it's people see that as easily digestible and so they want to see you know what are those seven tips or what are the 11 must-haves and so those have also worked and performed pretty well for us with our content marketing now uh, I want to talk a little bit about how we go about choosing our target audience and I have to give a little bit of uh, a shout out to AJ Wilcox from b2linked.com uh, for this graphic um, and this is kind of the, the targeting structure that he that he's told me about and he talks about when he uh, speaks about this. And what happens on LinkedIn is people have their profiles in varying degrees of completeness. And so sometimes using just one targeting method won't capture everyone in your target audience. So by using uh, these four different targeting methods, we're able to to really catch everyone within our target audience. And yeah, there's going to be a little bit of overlap on some of these. Um, but we're really looking to to reach everyone that would be uh, appropriate for us here to get our entire desired audience. So the, the first one we like to do is uh, by title, and that's pretty simple. That's what a lot of people use. So you can target your director of uh, human resources or your manager of human resources, um, that sort of thing. Um, and, then, and then we have our job function and seniority, and so LinkedIn has uh, predefined job functions that you can target, uh, human re resources being one of them. It's kind of on my mind since we're gearing up for Talent Week here, and I'm I'm looking at building out those audiences. And then you can also target based on seniority layered on top of that job function. So you can only look at people who are manager level or above or just C-level people. Um, then uh, with skills and groups, what I have found is that people with uh, that we target just based on skills and people that we target with groups are generally much more engaged on LinkedIn as a whole because if someone's going to go and join a group on LinkedIn, that means that they're probably interested in coming back frequently and participating in those. And once again, those are ones where we can also layer the seniority on top of the skills or on top of the groups. And when I'm creating out these audiences, I like to uh, keep the audience size usually between 50,000 to 500,000 people and the size there will also depend on the type of people I'm targeting and how frequently they might use LinkedIn. So salespeople, for example, prospect on LinkedIn a lot. They're on LinkedIn constantly throughout the day. So you could have a smaller audience size there and still reach many of those people. Uh, now, if you were to look at uh, someone who is not on LinkedIn as frequently, you might want to have a bit larger of an audience size just to make sure that your your ads are getting shown frequently and that you can um, measure how well that they're performing. Um, HR people uh, and recruiters are another one who are on LinkedIn very frequently and so you can adjust your audience size according to that. 
And now on some of these with uh, job function and seniority, for example, if you're targeting only salespeople, you're going to have a very large audience. So then you can start breaking your audiences down by specific uh, industries as well. So uh, those, are, those are how we do our targeting here at Qualtrics, and, and it's been very successful for us. So just to, to summarize, and then we'll hand it over uh, to LinkedIn, the keys for us as we do these things are being relevant, being direct, being creative, and being integrated. Um, and then, as, as you've obviously heard throughout all of this, uh, the key is to test, 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 A-B test, and figure out uh, and iterate quickly and, and fail quickly and learn fast, and, and that's been the key to us. And, and again, throughout all of that, it has to be adding value. Um, you can't go out there and just try to pitch someone. Uh, you need to help them see and understand what it is that, that we share and offer that will be of value um, and of help to them. So with that, let me uh, turn the time over and um, you'll hear now from Marina. Hi, sincere thank you so much, uh, Mike and, and Mitchell. Uh, that was a fantastic presentation. Let me go ahead and share my application. And I just want to make sure, um, Mike, Mitchell, can, can you guys hear me okay? Yes, we can. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So as part of this second session, what I'll do is take you through some of the best practices that we have with both sponsored and mail and sponsored updates when it comes to specifically for event marketing. So a lot of the points that Mitchell and Mike highlighted really resonate and are spot on with some of our top performing campaigns. And to kick off this best practices session, I really wanted to go back to the basics for both sponsored in-mail and sponsored updates with just some of the general best practices to capture your audience's attention. For sponsored updates, the strong visual, that picture is worth a thousand words and making sure that the, the paperclip function that you're using to upload the image, um, that you're putting the most attention um, grabbing image and that it matches your content. Uh, we find that recognized leaders and colorful images work really well and drive CTR substantially higher. And then when it comes to addressing your audience directly, such as using something like, hey, entrepreneurs, um, or starting with a question is a great way to engage your audience right away. Um, and it's also customi customizing your message to specifically to your audience and being relevant. Um, being concise is another thing really f around resonating and, and targeting and, and timeliness of it. So being concise in your update is also very important. And we see especially keeping the introduction to around 140 characters or less works well. Um, and then finally, the type of content that really matters, um, and we have the two tips here, which is around snackable content and lists or industry highlights that always work really great um, to engage your audience. But also think about matching your content to your marketing objectives. If you are looking to create brand awareness, for instance, you probably do not want to get the lead audiences to a white paper, um, so maybe a lighter version um, of the research. Uh, and don't forget to use sponsored, uh, direct sponsored content to test what works for your audience. It's really the best way to know how to appeal um, to your audience. Uh, it's really to test, to test, um, and to iterate. Now to pivot um, on to sponsored in-mail, um, when you are engaging with your target audience, when you are sending them the message, the engagement starts in the inbox. This is the first thing that the member sees um, when they go to their inbox. They see that subject line, that description, and some of the best practices we have here is keeping it short and keeping it concise, but also giving the member a little bit of an insight into what they'll be seeing on their landing page. There is a difference when you're sending, um, and you're able to customize it, whether the message comes from uh, a company or it comes from a person. And that really determines the, con the, that should be determined by the context of your message. If your message is personalized, you're in, you're invitation to this target audience um, is addressed in the first party, so I am inviting you or I think you'd benefit from this event, it makes a lot of sense for it to come from a person. On the other hand, if um, it's a much more company focused or you're inviting this particular target audience as a team, um, it does make sense to use a company logo. So there's really no right answer. It's all about what works best for you and what works best for your content. 
And then when it comes to the actual anatomy of the inbox, um, it's really around the concise message. And one of the, the tips that I like to use is read your message out loud to yourself and see how long it'll take you to read that message. It's a simple but very intuitive best practice um, that I like to use with our teams as well. So having a very clear call to action that explains or, or is very clear of what that particular recipient should be doing. Um, and then using that strong visual, it shouldn't overpower or confuse or take away from the message. It should essentially flow in, just like this banner here. It should flow with the rest of the message and the rest of the body. So over the next few slides, we've highlighted some really key tips for both sponsored in-mail and sponsored updates um, just to, to, um, to help you set up your content and making sure that you're set up for success. And to kick off um, with sponsored updates, a really great way to personalize the message to your audience and hook them um, is to really speak to them directly. Look at these two examples from Alteryx and from Microsoft where the target audience's title and geography is called out explicitly. This particular tactic lets you target audience know that this content and this webinar will be relevant for them. And here, personalization is a great way to boost the performance of the content and increase the attendance. This is really what will drive the results because your target audience will know that this message is meant for them and they'll actually engage with it. So similar with sponsored in-mail as well, being personal. So you are entering, your message is entering into our members' personal space. It's their LinkedIn inbox. And having a message that benefits them and aligns with their mission and makes, them, makes the members more productive and more successful, um, this is where we do see the performance and that kind of harmony and connection where um, they're coming to LinkedIn and they're getting the benefits from, instead of having to do this research, they're getting invitations for these events um, and webinars and um, all sorts of event-based programs which will actually make them a lot more successful. So in this particular example from, um, from OpenDNS, you do see here that Diana is doing a fantastic job being very personalized, um, saying that, um, you know, that she's hoping that they can connect and then she's referring to um, the background of the specific user, but at the same time, she's also including the very key details of the events, what the benefit will be um, and where these events will take place. And you can see on mobile as well, which is key, reaching your target audience on both desktop and mobile. Um, in real time is, is having kind of that message flow and being for it to be really easy to read. Now timeliness is key when it comes to events um, and creating a sense of urgency is a great way to boost registration for your event. This gives your target audience a motivation to act now and to amplify the strength of your all to action. So here you see Replicon um, has two really great examples. In the first example, the Save My Seat combines a sense of urgency along with a strong call to action. And in the second example, by calling out that there is limited spacing, Replicon is able to create a sense of urgency so that the member can click and then sign up um, before they run out of space. Also, a really good, good call out that I want to make here is that they're exhibiting other SU best practices here. For example, calling out the time of day of the webinar, having that provocative headline that really grabs the reader's attention um, and speaks to the benefits of the webinar. That's really key um, around timeliness and personalization. And so Replicon also used sponsored in-mail to promote their, um, their events as well. And here you can see them leveraging the call to action button to add that sense of timeliness. This is also a very personalized message, and it's, it's opened up with a question, which is a really interesting and unique way to do it. Here you have to be careful. The question should resonate with the target audience. It shouldn't really take away, and it should flow well with the rest of the body copy. When it comes to being helpful, people come to LinkedIn to further their careers and to be better professionals, and webinars are really a great way to do that. And by explicitly mentioning why this webinar would be helpful um, to this particular target audience is an effective way to earn their trust. It sets expectations on why exactly they would benefit from signing up for the webinar and what they should expect. So the Schwab example here um, is asking a question to the reader, and it's a really great way to both spark the conversation, engage the audience, and then convey the value of the event. Um, they're also calling out that the industry experts who will be speaking um, and speaking to them, and w which is really another great way to boost the clicks on your landing page. It's really around testing and figuring out what message really works, but also calling out 
what you know will resonate with your specific target audience. Um, here is an example that we have uh, around being helpful. So with sponsored in-mail, it can be really tempting to, to really pour out your heart around why your company is so fantastic, why this event is so amazing, but you really have to also be helpful. Um, help the member understand what it is the, the, the key takeaway. Um, specify what time investment or time commitment will be coming off um, with a specific event, um, and anything else that they'll take away um, from this webinar as well, um, or the event. Um, so being helpful in your content and not overloading it. So take, keep it to a 1,000 characters um, or less. And then from a visual standpoint, so for sponsored updates, large images on average, we found, have higher engagement rate than content with thumbnail images. These large images that um, perform much, much higher and much better just because how, of how visual they are. Um, large images that perform well have some stackable content or fact or attention-grabbing visuals um, that really stand out in the feed, which is most likely why they have such um, higher engagement. And here are um, some really great examples that grab um, the attention, or at least grab my attention. Um, the PGI's example here, um, the image already gives them some helpful information and sets them, uh, gives them expectations for what the webinar will be about. And then the Optus example um, has a large call to action, the register now, and it creates a visually strong call to action. Um, this, do, this image is doing most of the heavy lifting for them, so they can keep the actual intro pretty short um, and sweet and just focusing on the main value prop for the member here. For sponsored in-mail, being visual can mean a few different things. So in the inbox, you have your logo and making sure that your logo is clear and legible um, and it resonates and, and there's some sort of um, familiar, familiarity with it. Um, but then there's also that banner. The banner should enhance the message. You have your clear call to action. Um, here, it's, it's a really fantastic example. You have um, what the, the summit is, what the event is, the date of it, and then a strong call to action and, and what looks like a sponsor. But also, the actual body flows really beautifully. You have all the speakers outlined, um, and it's really around being visual, not just from the banner standpoint, but also what does it look like in general. So he here you can see on mobile, you can clearly um, see the formatting and the, and the call to action button and the bullets and the, uh, and the formatting. You do not want to overload on the formatting because it'll be really difficult to read and it'll be incredibly difficult to engage with the content as well. And that brings me to one of the most important points, which is really being mobile. Um, on LinkedIn, more than three quarters of the engagement comes from mobile. So it is very important to think mobile first when it comes to events and how to lay out your sponsored updates and to stand out on mobile. We really see that keeping the introduction short and sweet is a really great way to boost clicks on both desktop and mobile. And especially on mobile, this will ensure that your introduction does not get truncated and that your shortened link um, to, the, to the event registration is actually visible. And you'll see here that both of these updates are very well under 150 characters. The ability to convey your value prop is under, uh, under 150 char characters um, to really busy professionals uh, and can make your content stand out a lot more uh, on both desktop and mobile. And for sponsored, um, for sponsored in-mail specifically. Um, so here we have a couple of the screenshots that I pulled out from previous slides. And the key elements that I want to highlight here is your subject line carries through to your actual body copy, um, your call to action, but the most important is the formatting and the body link. You can see in the first uh, message, but also the second and the third, it, the, the body link is incredibly visible and stands out from the rest of the text. So if you have a call to action and it's already a strong call to action, the next step um, to make sure that you optimize your clicks is to really include a um, body link that makes sense with the rest of the text, that makes sense with the rest of the context, whether it's the agenda items, whether it's the different locations of the event, um, or if you have a download or anything that complements or supplements um, the specific event as well. And then the last but not, re not least is, is around 
being resourceful. Um, webinars and events produce a lot of helpful content. Um, and as you see from the Pinnacle um, Financial Strategies example here, you can extend the useful life of your webinars by reposting them for lead generation um, with a refreshed and appropriate call to action um, to download this webinar. Um, so it's a really fantastic way to take your lead gen efforts to the next level and build on the content, this great content that you invested so much time in, um, and continue to repurpose it so when you're reaching out to new audiences, when you're um, nurturing your new audiences, this is a fantastic way to continue and, and be resourceful and to rebuild your content. And that applies to sponsored in-mail as well. One other thing that I would call out, which is actually uh, done really well here, um, is if the event is personal and it's coming from a person, a marketing manager, a director, and you have a high profile event or the whole purpose of the event or the webinar is to network and to create these connections, uh, my recommendation for being resourceful with sponsored in-mail is hyperlink your, um, your signature. So here, for example, Ian included a link to his profile so that in addition to driving to his registration page, um, the specific recipient of the sponsored email will also, can also connect uh, with Ian as well. So this is a really great way to kind of to take that connection to the next level. Uh, one thing I would say is um, this is not a best practice for across all. So if you do not have the intention to connect and if you do not have the intention to track um, conversions or to track any kind of traffic off of that profile page, my recommendation is to keep uh, just a, a, a body link that direct also to the landing page. Um, if you do hyperlink your signature, you will essentially potentially drive away some of the clicks that can go to your registration page to that profile page. So once again, it really goes back to what your objective is, setting your objective um, and your goals for your campaign. Um, and then to summarize some of the key takeaways, uh, and not just from the best practices, but in general, just to put this webinar together um, is really around the value, the timeliness, the relevance, the action, and the impact that your campaign has. This is what drives performance. Um, making sure that you really invest the time to put together content and, and read through it and, and maybe ask a colleague or two um, to see whether this resonates with them. It's really around giving and getting the value. So first you have to give to actually get the value um, because that's when the, me the members will be engaged. They come to LinkedIn to be engaged and to learn and to be more, pr more productive. Um, timeliness, um, urgency for the events, so both um, sponsored in-mail and sponsored updates are real-time delivery products, which means that um, the only time that either the message del is delivered to the inbox or the sponsored update is shown on uh, in the member's feed, uh, this, is, this creates a, timely, a sort of timeliness for the message. Um, and then when it comes to the actual um, relevance of the message, it calling out that target audience and speaking to that target audience, whether it's um, with a sponsored in-mail and you're crafting your message to be very personal, or if it's in the sponsored update and you're just calling out to the specific target audience, it really does make a difference. And A, B test to understand which call to action uh, really works, which one is the most effective. And when we did some of the tests around subject lines and descriptions, uh, it really goes back to the, your target audience and what will resonate the most with your target audience. Um, and that's what creates that impact, um, to keep it concise, to keep it clear um, so that you're not wasting their time. So kind of to what Mike said, so it's not it, so it's easy to actually engage with your content. Make sure that your content is easy to absorb, to engage your landing pages, or have clear call to actions um, so that the whole process from when the member sees your sponsored update in the feed or when they see your message in the inbox, it's a seamless flow um, throughout. Um, so with that, I want to go ahead and pause, um, and I want to go ahead and, and see if we have any questions in the feed. Uh, Mike, um, Mitchell, are there any questions that um, that kind of come up to to you yeah. uh, that you'd like to answer? Absolutely. So this one, uh, I'm this is Mike. I'm going to ask some of these just to Mitchell because he's the the one they're directed to. But this one comes in from Steve. He says, "What are your thoughts on targeting every employee in a specific company with a sponsored update targeted specifically to that company? How would you do this, and would you ever do this?" Yeah, so this is definitely very possible. That's one of the nice things about LinkedIn is there there are a lot of great targeting features. Um, one of those being you can target employees of specific companies. Um, so this is definitely possible. Um, 
I, I personally don't do this because the problem you run into is a lot of times there just aren't, there's just not a big enough audience. Um, what I actually use this feature for more frequently though is um, you can use it to actually restrict people from specific companies from seeing your ads. So um, for example, I a lot of times will we'll put our competitors on um, to not be able to see our ads um, just because I don't feel like they, they really are interested in buying our software and I'd rather not give them uh, competitive intelligence if, if possible. So that's, that's more what I use that feature for, but it's definitely possible and you know it could work for your specific uh, target companies. I probably would just want to test it out. Okay. You have a, another question? Yeah, this next question comes in from Gene. Are you capturing registration for sponsored events or pointing to another registration form? Yeah, so, so generally what we do is we send them to a landing page that either has the registration form right there or we'll have a call to action for the registration form and what we've found converts fairly well is when that button, the call to action for the registration, uh, is it converts better when it pops out in a light box uh, versus taking them to a different page. Uh, so that's what, that's what we currently do, but I'm sure we'll test uh, some various things um, in the future, especially for Talent Week. Okay, uh, this next one comes from Elspeth. Uh, asking, did you do the A-B testing as part of the sponsored email program with LinkedIn prior to sending the email? Yeah, so with this, th there are a few things that you can do. So LinkedIn, when you're preparing your in-mails, they'll send out some, they'll send out test in-mails so you can see what it'll look like. So we ran through probably five or six different iterations just to make sure that we, that we felt like it looked how we wanted it to. And then you can send out some smaller batches um, to do an A-B test, and then once you decide on the one that really performs well, you can send out a, uh, a large in-mail um, uh, blast. And so that, that's how, we, how we've how we done it. Okay. Here's another from Carola. Uh, any examples of using the LinkedIn sponsored updates or, or sponsored in-mails for driving registration for live events and conferences? I know we talked about uh, cxweek.com and talentweek.com but uh, when have we used it for live events? Yeah, so we, we every year run our user conference, uh, the Qualtrics Insights Summit, which uh, if you guys do anything with insights, definitely worth checking out. Um, and we have run sponsored updates uh, to promote that. We also do um, smaller, I guess, user, user group meetings in different cities around the, the country. and. Uh, we've used it for that, and that's where some of the best practices that Irina talked about, um, such as calling out specific locations, like the Austin, Texas example, you can do things like that to really get some great, um, great results with those sponsored updates. Yeah. Well, with that, Irina, it looks like we're coming up uh, on the hour. Are there any others that you wanted to, to address or, or chat through? Um, sure. Let me look through. I have a couple. Um, I had one from Nancy that I saw here. Um, in mail. What is the most in mails you can send? Are there options to send the the most amount I'm in sales and would like to use uh, mass emails, but not uh, be stopped at a small amount per month? Um, so Nancy, one of the one of the things that I wanted to clarify here, and I hope that I, I answer your question correctly. If not, I'm happy to follow up um, directly as well. But I want to I want to create a distinguishing here be between in mail and our sponsored in mail product. So. InMail is the capability for a message to be sent from a member to a member. Um, so that's when you, as a member, if you're connected to somebody or if you're not connected to them, you're able to send them a message on LinkedIn. So with sponsored InMail, the way it works is it's almost like the way, um, let's say, just to make it easy here, is the way sponsored updates work where you create uh, or you select a target audience that you'd like to reach um, and you work with an account team that will help you provide an estimate into about how many uh, members or what your audience size is um, and that's really what determines how many uh, sponsored emails you can potentially send to that specific target audience. So these sponsored emails are also delivered in real time. So what that means and if, especially if you've purchased sponsored email um, last year or before um, the relaunch from this February um, is now sponsored email is only delivered when the member is actually on LinkedIn, which makes it a lot more relevant. So 
the delivery is triggered when the member is actually engaging on LinkedIn and fit in within that specific target audience. So I think to to kind of summarize the question here is the, the maximum is really determined based on the target audience that you have available and either how um, granular or how um, broad you want to take that. Um, and I think that's really all the questions um, that I have. Um, I have one more that Nancy had also is looking to target specific industries and specific titles within those industries um, and the best solution to do that. And at LinkedIn, um, our targeting capabilities are just incredible. So um, the good news is you can use uh, almost all of the products that we have to be able to um, select specific industries and specific titles. Um, but depending on your target audience, kind of to what Mitchell said earlier, um, using skills and groups um, can also be a phenomenal um, other way to, to reach that specific target audience. Um, now with that said, I want to be very mindful and respectful of your time. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mike and Mitchell. You guys have been absolutely amazing. Um, I hope this webinar has been helpful to um, everybody who attended. Uh, we will be sending um, the recording to this webinar as, long, as well as the slides and a follow-up email. Um, please give us about 48 hours. Um, you should have it in your inbox, um, especially if you registered. Um, and I, I learned a lot, so much from you guys. So thank you so much for, for taking the time and, and being so dedicated and, and hugely appreciate it. Well, thanks so much for having us. It was a delight to be on here with all of you. Yeah, thank you. Fantastic. Well, all have a have a wonderful rest of the week and um all the best. Thanks so much.